you start thinking kind of like a coach? Sadly, sadly, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liverpool, I love them. A little bit faster, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of, not difficult. Not difficult to, to do that this time and, and to chat a little bit and of course it's a pleasure to to talk to you and to catch up a little bit thank you so much the same here yes when you are injured you know it gets frustrated because you want to be on the pitch with your teammates and you know doing doing everything together but sometimes it's not possible and uh, you just have to accept it it's part of the job like you know but uh, you know just trying to recover as quick as possible and, and come back fit yeah, exactly. Sometimes you, you you rush it a little bit and then it's even worse. The solution is even worse uh, yeah. because it takes you a, a, a lot longer than, than you were expecting. But but uh, it's the way it is. And like you you will said, you have to accept it. Listen, yeah. um, how has the season been doing? I mean, uh, last year you did a, an amazing job. You uh, kind of uh, did a, a very consistent uh, tournament. And this year you struggled a little bit to get results. Uh, what is that? What do you think that... Uh, this happening or, or why do you think that you, you need to improve to, to get that consistency? Well, I think uh, last year a new coach came, Niko uh, Kovac, and um, you know, when a new coach comes, everyone, you know, ha it has an impact on everyone's head because you want to improve, you want to do things, you know, at the maximum level. And yes, indeed, we had a, a good season. We nearly qualified for the Champions League. Uh, we competed well against PSG, Lille, even we beat PSG twice in the season. And we were a little bit short at the end uh, to, to fight for the league. I think we didn't start that well the season because, you know, we needed to get the system right and everything. So we lost a couple of games there that I think made us be a bit short. And this year, we knew it was going to be a little bit more difficult because um, the difference between this year and last year was that last year, we were playing every Sunday, so we had a lot of time during the week to train, to rest, to prepare. And uh, that's an advantage, obviously. And this year, playing in Europe, you play every Thursday, every Sunday, every Thursday, every Sunday. And you know how it is. Like It takes time, it takes energy, plus the national teams are traveling. You have to go sometimes in the Europa League um, very far come back at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, you know, come back, rest well, play Sunday at 1 o'clock, early kickoff. So, yeah, we're, uh, we have a very young team. We need to to adapt in this case. For, for many of them, it's, it's the first time that you play every three days and it's not an easy thing. Totally, yeah, yeah, totally agree. I understand those traveling sometimes, they, they kill you. And listen, uh, you're talking about uh, your own team. It's true that you got uh, in the middle, you got Diop, you got uh, Motuani, you got um, Matazo, the other young players. Do you think, do you feel the responsibility when, when you see those young players to try to be kind of a mentor, like the ones you had when you were young, those uh, Gilberto Silvas, Vieira? Uh, PDS, all those fantastic players that I'm sure that they help you to develop yourself. Do you think that kind of responsibility now that you are you are uh, there in, in Monaco? Yes, for sure. And I accepted that when I first came. One of the reasons for me to come here, apart from, you know, competing and playing and, and everything was, you know, this is a club full of young players. This mm -hmm. is a club where they love to buy players for basically that nobody knows. And make them superstars, um, and and this is the case. And I knew that one of the reasons why I was coming here was for this. And um, I have a great relationship with all the young players. I love playing with them. Yeah, like you said, it reminds me of me when I when I started uh, at Arsenal at a very young age. And you know, it's different. You know, when you have someone who you can look up to, that they they talk to you when you make mistakes, or you can improve. And I, I, uh, the way I, I love it more because I feel that these, these players, they respect me a lot. They ask me a lot of questions. Uh, they are interested in knowing, in uh, learning, and uh, it makes me, it makes me satisfied. Yeah, it's kind of what you re reminds you what what you were uh, back then. And uh, but the way you you're saying it is like, um, like you start feeling like like a coach. You are working like a coach. Are you thinking a lot now? I mean, you're still young, 34 is, is a pretty good age uh, to continue competing. But are you start thinking kind of like a coach in some ways? Yes, sadly, sadly, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I always felt like playing in midfield, 
Um, you you have to be a little bit of coach. I agree. You, I agree. No, but you, you view the game in, an, in another way. You are in the center of everything. It's not like when you play on the wing or right back or full back or center mm. back, even goalkeepers. You, you see the pitch from another angle. In midfield, you are surrounded by everybody. You need to see the full picture all the time. And mm. I always try to analyze the game faster than the others because, you know, I was not very strong or very fast in, in you know, physically. So I always had to be better in other in other aspects of the game and I always try to be clever and, and faster on the brain and, and yes in this case and especially now since I came to Monaco like I said you know I signed here for the football of course 100% but uh, one of the objectives was to try and be someone who the young players can look up to and, and, and kind of give them the example and the motivation to, to be always better you know and uh, in this case you know, they are always uh, asking questions, like I said to you before, they want to know and what happened there and what will happen there and how should I do this, the positioning of my body, what would you do in this situation? So it's, to be honest, for me, it's amazing. You know, it, it, it gives me a lot of satisfaction. For example, today uh, we played a friendly game against the, the second team and because I'm injured, I couldn't do it. So I was with the coach, with Nico, the assistant coach, uh, with the analyst and while the game was going on we were talking and you know trying to analyze the game what can you do better he was asking me questions what would you do there so you know for me it's a fantastic education and I'm learning a lot so yeah I am thinking like that a little bit Love it, love it, love it. And looking forward to that charter that we'll talk about in the future. Now uh, we want to see you back again on the field. So listen, you're talking about Nico. Um, uh, what is what can you take from him? You got fantastic uh, coaches uh, during your career. I'm not going to talk about the, the big ones. Bueno, Luis Aragonés, Luis Enrique, Wenger. Uh, you have fantastic ones. What do you take from, from Nico now that you have closer to him, that you, you've been managed? And also now you kind of are assisting or being helpful to the to the team. What can you get from him, or what what are you gonna take from him, and you're gonna use him maybe in the future? Well, I think uh, what I take from every coach that I had is the the different or the, the 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 way they adapt. This is the thing that I always look up the most. What kind of players do you have? How do you adapt to the players you have? And this is what. Kind of, for example, now in this moment, Nico is trying to do because, for example, when I first came here, when he first came, sorry, he he wanted to play more on a four-three-three, mm -hmm. a little bit the same concepts like Pep, a little bit, you know, very similar style of play. Then we were struggling a little bit. He saw that maybe we were not as good technically, like for example, Pep's teams. You know, I don't even have to say, I don't have to tell you who 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 is coached, but. Uh, it wasn't really working the way that uh, we It wanted. The way of playing to the players that they got. Exactly. And we had, we were very good in physical impact. We can run a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very strong. We are fast. The French league as well is very, very physical league. I mean, uh, everyone is strong. Everyone is fast physically you know, at another level. So you need to, to adapt. And, and, and since we switched to a 4-2-3-1, a little bit more direct, uh, always with the concept that we want to keep the ball and we want to dominate the game. Yeah, but but quick, quicker transitions. Exactly, exactly. Quicker transitions, uh, playing more uh, between the lines, but with the objective to, to, to run in behind the opponent. And uh, it worked much better for us. And we stuck that way. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, in, in, in Europa League, uh, top of the top of the table, and you're gonna face Real Sociedad, that you will know, and 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 uh, it's a key game uh, actually. Uh, if you wanna think about going forward, I, the last one I think is Tungras, right? The the one you're gonna have. So probably the, against Real Sociedad is the the, the stronger that you open and that you're gonna face, and if you probably get the, the result, uh, yeah, in the next round. I think it's key that game, like you said, because. Obviously, you know, going to grass will be the, the, the final uh, game and, and where probably things will be decided. But going to Real Sociedad, playing against Real Sociedad when they come here, if we can manage to win that game, mm -hmm. I think for sure we will be qualified. And depending what's happening between PSV and grass, then then we'll have to, to win or not on, on the last game. But I think it will give us this uh, reassurance 
to be in the next round, which is the most important because, in fact, I think it's probably the most difficult group uh, in the Europa League. Yeah, one of the most difficult, totally right. And, and, and do you see yourself, I mean, you see that the team is strong enough and with uh, quality enough to, to go longer on the competition? You think that is, I'm, I'm not talking about arriving to the final. That's, yeah, it can happen, yeah. but it's not that, that far. But you can see maybe quarterfinals, semifinals. I think so. Why not? I mean, um, it will all depend how we can really uh, adapt and if we can improve the level of uh, playing Thursdays and Sundays all the time. Like I said to you, uh, uh, Nico is trying to manage this a little bit, changing a few players for Thursday, then mm -hmm. put another ones on Sunday. Every player wants to play every game like you want, like you know, everyone wants to play every minute. But uh, but yeah, we will need to, to be a, a, a full team, a full mm -hmm. squad, all to perform. Uh, at a certain level, you know, there's no excuses like last year saying, okay, because you play every Sunday and we are winning, so the team has more trust in one specific team, one yeah. more identified 11. No, this year he's giving opportunities to all the players. Nobody can complain about anything and you just need to to prove that you are you are ready to play. And if we can manage that and, and And with the squad we have, with, which I think it's very competitive, if we can maintain the level of performance from everybody, I think, why not? We can we can do well in the competition, yeah. Definitely. Rotation on these days is, is a massive one. Yeah. If you want to be, because now we're talking now on this day right now, that everything, everybody thinking about the next game, the next game, but you need to, to see the big picture because March is going to be, Uh, crucial to, 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 to the result, to, to the goals that you have. And if you don't arrive with a little bit of confidence and, of course, with the, 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 a big amount of players in your mm -hmm. squad fit enough to, to play, uh, not with the last breath, uh, yeah, it's not going to be possible. Um, right. uh, Cesc, let, 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 me, let me review a little bit of, um, of the Premier League uh, uh, with the teams that, that you played and some of the coaches that, that, that you has been managing you because uh, we were talking before about uh, Wenger, when uh, that is probably, or at least the, 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 the way that I see it, probably one of your mentors, the, the, the best coaches that it was, more influential in your career when you arrived uh, back in uh, in Arsenal. And I have to say, I have to tell you, I never liked it to go there to play against you at Highbury because, um, I mean, I used to love it. Fantastic pitch. One of the best stadiums for me. One of my favorite ones. The grass was always perfect. But it's true that um, it was a, a bit, I mean, every single time it was so hard to, to play because you had that kind of Uh, possession game all the time, wingers that they would fly, a lot of quality up front and in midfield, so it was very difficult. And um, I was thinking about how 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 has been changing the, the the club since uh, your time back then uh, when you guys did an amazing job, and and now it's struggling a little bit. How do you see uh, Arsenal now at the moment under Arteta's um, uh, arms? I think it's a uh... It's basically difficult to compare because, like you said, uh, a lot of things changed. Um, you have to understand that when we were at Highbury, uh, first of all, the, the, the quality of the team, you know, you played against us and it was always amazing games, you know, because the, the quality of the, the team was amazing. The pitch was smaller. We had this transition that in, in two touches, we were one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper with Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, Freddie Lundberg periods on the wings big names, big names. like it was fantastic for us you know like the same like Liverpool have their crowd and the way you guys always played aggressive and also transitions and stuff like that you maintain it even today I mean mm. uh, sometimes when Liverpool are their best now and before when you guys won the Champions League or, or, or even this team now it's they're unstoppable sometimes I mean as well as you defend it's difficult so after that when we moved to the Emirates Uh, obviously, the generation of the Invincibles, the team that I started with, started to drop a little bit because we were they were getting older. Mm -hmm. uh, they all started to live slowly. So we had a very young team, a new generation full of quality, but that we didn't have... Uh, how can I explain it? We didn't have maybe still the mentality. The leadership, the maybe. The, that leadership that is needed. The, yeah. In the, in the Invincibles, you have four, five, six players that they were leaders in, in uh, on the field. Exactly. You had maybe, maybe more. If you start counting out Jens Lehmann, Sol Campbell, Ashley Cole, Lauren, yeah. uh, Vieira, Gilberto, Thierry, 
uh, Dennis Bergkamp. You had at least seven, eight players who are leaders. You know, the transition after we couldn't spend as much money, you know, because we we moved to, to the Emirates. It was a, a needed change, even though we all miss uh, Highbury, but it was a needed change for the club to improve and to get better. And I think from there, we started to pay a little bit, you know, the price for it uh, in terms of uh, players leaving, including myself or other like Robin Van Persie, Samir Nasri, who we were a little bit the key players of the project, yeah. but that for some reason we were growing, growing, getting older and we wanted more, I think, uh, like results. We wanted trophies because, for example, me, I won the Euros and the World Cup and I knew the feeling to win, you know, and and, and you felt that we were at, at Arsenal, we were always short mm. on that and we were always asking for a little bit more of quality, you know. I remember when Xavi Alonso could have signed for us uh, and he didn't for nothing or Luis Suarez didn't go come for, you know, for a million maybe uh, and then he's become this super player at Liverpool and things like this that you are like, as a player, you want to compete, you want these players to come to you and uh, it was a bit sometimes difficult to take but uh, I think now they are in the process to go up. It's not easy because I think uh, Mikel had a very difficult job uh, from the beginning taking a, a team that didn't have any confidence at all. A team that uh, were a little bit, it felt on the on the pitch, the, the spirit like from the not 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 uh, focused on no no real uh, construction between attack and, and defense. You know so. I felt that he's doing well. I mean, his numbers are not bad. Obviously, at Arsenal, everyone will demand you to be top four, mm. minimum, always. And when you don't do that, that means that you are not doing well enough. But again, I feel for him because it's not a diff- it's not an easy job at all. Uh, he's improving players. He also tried to play one way. It didn't kind of work, even though they won the, the FA Cup at the beginning. So he had to change. Now they bought good players, they have some great young players, so hopefully we are on the way up. Yeah, I was going to tell you because uh, those Saka Smith bro, that kind of remind me a little bit of, of you, I mean, a little bit faster, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of, not difficult. Not difficult to do that, to that. <laughs> but it's true that it was, um, that, that is a, that kind of similarity with um, the team that, that uh, you played, that you actually were the captain back then. Uh, with a young team and needed to to make that transition, bring players to, to start rebuilding the team. And now uh, Arteta is trying to do it. And yeah, actually, I was going to ask you, what do you think about who is going to be, what is what they can be aiming this season? But it's true that, yeah, they're going to be asked for top four, top six, I think it will be fantastic and uh, continue uh, building for, for next season. Listen. I, I don't think, I don't think people demand for top four at the moment. I think, the fans, they are realistic. And I was at uh, one event in London a few days ago, uh, mm-hmm. edition, a charity event for, with David Dean and Arsene Wenger. And you speak to the fans and they don't expect now to win everything and to be top four all the time. But I think they want to see an improvement. Yeah, You know, like you said, I think top six can be regarded as a, as, a, as a good season. Next year, play Europa League, start feeding these players with Europe football, uh, playing like, for example, uh, us this year, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, trying to compete. And then once you have this level, you know, of course, achieve for the Champions League and, and try to maintain the team there. Yeah, exactly. It started becoming, uh, I mean, I, I think it's the feeling, the, the, the feeling that the supporters have is like, I want to see, I, I want to, uh, recognize the team that I follow, that I supported for 15, 20 years. I want to see that team that won a trophy that showed me that the football is so beautiful. I want to see it back again on the field. Probably is that that the, the beginning of what is coming next. And and you will mention Arteta is, is doing a, a great job. Uh, I, I read the other day uh, that um, one of your toughest managers was uh, Conte, that signed now for, for Spurs. And uh, I, I, it's not bad. He already got to two games and, and no bad results. And but I, I, I was curious. Why, why do you say that it was the toughest one? What is God that um, uh, made you? Because you had Luis Enrique, that I think as well is one of those that push you uh, very hard. But why uh, you mentioned uh, Antonio Conte? I think uh, with Antonio, it was the first time that uh, 
I've seen someone know exactly. I mean, every coach has their own philosophy, their own methodology. But with Conte, I felt that everything was super studied. Like every single session, physical session, tactical session, technical session, the way he wanted us to play, it was like going to school. I promise you, he will tell you from the goalkeeper until how you score a goal, yeah. what you have to do. Wow. What, exactly everything. Okay. Maybe it's in a different way of, for example, how I saw football or how I, at the beginning it was difficult for me. Don't get me wrong. Of course. A lot of running, a lot of intensity, uh, big sessions, double sessions, uh, gym they sessions. Brought in Italian, a little bit of the Italian styles of the 90s where you have to run every single exactly. game. Exactly. Exactly. It's all, and, and modern football nowadays, all the coaches yeah. will tell you it's about running, running, running and fighting first and then the quality. Mm. Okay, but uh, with Conte was the first time that I saw this because I always based myself on my own quality, on my own vision. I pass the ball where I feel I will be dangerous and where I can hurt the, the opponents. Mm -hmm. I never, I had coaches, yeah, Pep had a lot of positioning game, but we had freedom inside of this. Yeah. With Conte, the freedom was non-existent. You know, you had to do, he was telling me where I have to pass the ball. <laughs> and for me, this was very difficult to accept at the beginning because I'm 29 years old. In that moment, I already played for 13 years. I, I, I played in every final. I won a lot of things. And this guy is telling me where I need to pass the ball. <laughs> you know, so, so for me, it was difficult to accept. But then you realize that once everyone is in the position that they have to be, and I pass the ball where he tells me that I need to pass the ball, and the others make the right movement around, mm -hmm. it was working. Yeah. It was working. And we won the league by by distance in the end and uh, we may I think we won 32 games it was in that moment it was the the, the highest in the history of the Premier League yeah. Pep was at City club was at Liverpool uh, Mourinho was at United so you know it wasn't an, an easy task and Yeah, you were like a, a like a perfect machine. Yeah, no freedom. Yeah. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody needs to that if I do this, they're gonna be there. And for you, actually, that you are the player who are used to have uh, people running around you, and you are the one who was gonna assist. If you know that someone is moving, I don't even exactly. think I'm gonna put them. It helped me. It helped me a lot because, for example, I sometimes if I want to give an assist or a good ball, you needed to. You, I was depending, for example, a player that I love to play with, Pedrito with mm -hmm. Pedro, this, this runs in behind. Yeah, I love to play with this guy, okay? So, there was a lot of Pedritos in the team because <laughs> Conte was teaching them how to exactly make the run and when to make the run. Like, William started to make a lot of runs, mm -hmm. uh, Batshuayi, Diego Costa, even Hazard, that he was always coming more to fit and play and, and be the playmaker. He was running in behind. So, I think that was really important for our success, that the machine worked together like this perfectly and and we were very successful but for sure he was he i learned how how to train under him especially because oh. you know it was the first time in my life that i didn't play europe because we did very bad the year before with Mourinho. we finished uh, eighth so i don't know i don't remember exactly yeah So we had like last year here in Monaco, we had a lot of time to train during the week, rest, mm -hmm. prepare physical, tactical, technical trainings a lot. And it was it was perfect. And by the time that we were trained during the week, I, I, I felt maybe the best I felt physically. Fantastic. Yeah, that, so strong, so. And this helps a lot in the pitch after. All right, of course, of course. When you get the results, when you see the results, of course. So the way that, you, that you're telling me, I mean, then... Uh, because, you know, with the Spurs, is, we always have the doubt. He's going to work with them. He's going to work with them. They're going to manage to get a trophy. They're going to manage to, to fight for them. And, and it's true that they, if you are talking this way, probably, uh, yeah, they, we, we can see Spurs probably, maybe not this year, but uh, soon fighting for, for, the, for the trophy. Because at the moment, it's your former team, uh, Chelsea. The one is, is on fire. I mean, they look fantastic. And... Um, Uh, I know that you won back then with them, but I'm, I'm not sure if you see any kind of, because the way that you're telling me that um, uh, Conte worked with you, 
do you think that uh, Tuchel is kind of trying to make the same thing? I mean, everybody moving, everybody running, everybody controlling, everybody because they they look like this at the moment. Yeah, they have uh, maybe a different uh, different movements in certain uh, patterns, but yeah, the concept I think is the same. But I, I'm very impressed with uh, Thomas. Uh, you all are because huh? yeah, because uh, I was here in Paris, I, I, not in Paris, but I was here in the French league when he was in Paris. And we played against them um, a few times, even last year, I think it was. Before he went to Chelsea, we played against them. We beat them here uh, in Monaco 3-2. And I felt, when I was playing, I was playing as a number 10 that game. Mm -hmm. And I felt I'm running the game here. No one is putting pressure on me. Mm -hmm. I felt that the team was very distant, no compactness, nothing. And I felt very comfortable playing against PSG that day. And, I, yeah. you know, when, when he, he to went break. to... Chelsea. He used to break very easily, right? The, the, the yes. strikers and the defenders, kind of what he's happening at the moment. They were not the team. They were not the yeah. team, especially defensively, you know. And uh, when he first signed for, for Chelsea, I was curious because I spoke to, to Thomas after these games uh, because he was telling me that when I was younger, well, things, a few things, you know, we were talking after the game. And uh, I was curious to see how he will do with Chelsea. And straight away, after two, three games, you can see the impact that he's done. And then I realized that at the end of the day, the team makes the difference. Because if you have a team full of quality like Chelsea have, but on top of that, they are humble, they work hard, they are disciplined, they know what to do when they listen to the coach, and they give their all, and they are together and they are a full team, then these results come. So yeah. what I felt a little bit is that maybe at Paris, he was trying to do the same thing, but for whatever reason, or they don't listen to him, or they didn't believe in it, or they didn't, uh, you, you know what I mean? At the end yeah, of the day, yeah, of course, the, the, of message of the, manager, yeah. the message that the manager gives, if the players want to do it, it can be very successful. Yeah. But at the same time, it shows as well that if the players don't believe in it or they don't listen to it or, or they do what they want, then the coach can say Nothing. whatever he wants. He can work 20 hours a day that it will never work. Nothing to do. Nothing to do. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to tell you if, they, if you see them contenders because I, I guess that you're going to say yes. The way that uh, City, Liverpool are playing at the moment, probably those three are the ones that are going to be fighting at the, in the last third of the season probably because Chelsea I mean is at the top it's true that they struggle a couple of uh, results but they look so disciplined they look so solid yeah I think it will be between one of these three uh, Man City they always start a little bit slow yeah true huh? always every year slow 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 it feels like maybe this year now but then they pick up and they, they become a, a machine Liverpool I love them the way they play the, the energy they put into the into the game, the spaces they, they create to attack behind, like it's fantastic. And then Chelsea, for sure, they were not ready maybe the two or three years uh, before, but now I think they are ready to challenge for sure for the Premier League. Yeah, definitely. It's a joy to watch, to, to be honest. Uh, we follow the Premier League, Champions League, and I enjoy just watching. In this different uh, situation now, because normally we've seen so many, for so many years, 4-2-3-3, 4-2-3-1, uh, and now at the moment, a lot of people are changing with those three at the back that I, I actually start to enjoy. If you you think on uh, playing with three at the back, but being, being uh, moving forward. Uh, says, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> I didn't want to talk about this, but I think we we, we should because um, it's our former club, it's the, the club that at least we I think we love a lot, and and he's struggling at the moment, and he's Barcelona, and it's painful a little bit to see what, what has been happening in the past few months, and I'm sure that you follow very closely, and 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 well, at least we got Chavi's Chavi back, and we got a little bit of hope. That's at least what I feel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Xavi has brought now hope, enthusiasm, energy. Uh, like he said the other day, a lot of times, a lot of discipline. Uh, he's brought uh, rules back that identified the club. Um, but yeah, no, it's not about the last month. I think uh, you watch Barcelona the last few years, even five. I'm, I'm going to go as far as five, six years uh, with the best players in the world. Um, in the Champions League, they were struggling most of the mm -hmm. time. What yeah. happened 
against PSG, even though after they came back 6-1, like a miracle, but they, yeah. they lost 4-0. Roma, we got some they, they lost Juventus 3-0 after, they were did Roma, they did uh, Liverpool, they did Bayern yeah. Munich. Yeah. You know, it's not uh, something, and you had the best player in the history of the of the, of the the sport. You have Luis Suarez, uh, uh, the first year there was Neymar, so, you know, it, something has been happening, for sure, especially mm-hmm. maybe uh, I don't know if inside the dressing room or around the club, but because I'm not there, I don't know if my friends are there, but I don't really ask too many yeah. questions about what's I'm happening. To ask, yeah, exactly. Because uh, in football, you know, sometimes it goes good, sometimes not so good, and we all have problems. Eh? Even when things go well, there are always things, but when you win, the problems are never there, but they are there. And then... I just, I just hope, you know, that uh, we will be able to to identify ourselves again with the Barca that we all love. Like you said, uh, Xavi, for sure, he's got clear ideas of what he wants to do. I have no doubt about this. He knows he's a very positive guy. You know him as well. He always sees the the the, the clear picture. He was one of the what uh, five best players in the history of the of the club for sure, maybe more. And uh, I believe in him. Yes, maybe it is early because I'm sure in a in an ideal world, maybe he wanted to wait a little longer to take the team. But yeah. listen, it's a uh, he feels ready. He's an experience, and uh, I just I can only wish him the the very best. Yeah, definitely. And listen, and, and when there is a, a big crisis, there is always a, a positive thing that you can take from it. And and I guess what I see, or I'm not sure if if, if you kind of agree with me is like now you cannot spend money uh, you cannot bring players so you have to pull from the academy you have to start taking players from the academy and suddenly wow we got players that they can actually play very well they can, they can compete that they can bring the talent and probably if there was no a crisis like this one we maybe um, saw them leaving the club and playing in, in other in other mm-hmm. competition or in other in other teams and you can see there those, I'm not going to talk about Ricky Putter, he's been already there, Miguel Araujo, but you can see now these two young ones, I, I'm sure that the, the, the you've been following very closely, Gabi and Nico, that it's been impressive the way that they have introduced themselves in the first team, in the national team, and that they're going to be the future. So this is a positive thing that I think that we, we, have, we have to think that we are going to see uh, the academy, finally the philosophy, the values of the club, brought into the first team again that probably has been missing a little bit for the past few years, like you will mention, without those, you, Xavi, Iniesta, uh, Victor Valdez, uh, Piquet, Puyols, and etc. Yeah, and, and uh, like you said, I mean, sometimes uh, it's uh, funny because we need to have a bad moment to introduce the academy players because sometimes, for example, I remember when I was there and we had this amazing team, it was impossible for the young players to come in because these players were playing, were winning, were playing well. There's no space. Maybe Sergio Roberto is the one that I can remember that slowly, slowly, and it took him years Years. to be be starting, you know? And uh, for example, Lampard, we can talk about whatever but he couldn't sign and he brought Mason Mount James uh Christensen started to play much more um uh, I don't know I'm missing now I'm I'm missing a lot but four or five for sure that if for example on my time when we when we were with Mourinho Conte it would have been impossible that Mason Mm -hmm. Mount and James they start playing so many games so you know the balance sometimes you need to sacrifice Arsene Wenger used to say that for example with me he will say, okay, he's 16. I believe in him. I put him on. And I know that sometimes I will have to pay the price that I will make mistakes at 16, 17, 18. But I need to take this for him to keep improving and be a top player. And this is sometimes, I know in the top clubs it's difficult because you need to win and the coaches are in a lot of pressure nowadays. You lose two games, three games, you're out. Change, change. That's why, you know, Kuman, we can say what we want about him and maybe people are not happy with him or mm-hmm. whatever, but he did that. He brought players from the academy. He made them play. He made them regular. And now Xavi will have 
you know, two, three players extra that maybe five years ago would have been impossible. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed, mate. I, I'm actually, well, uh, you know that, that we all love uh, uh, Xavi. Uh, we, we know him for many, many years and I'm sure that he's capable of, uh, he's got uh, maybe not much experience as a manager, but uh, as you will mention, players on the midfield, I always will say that players in the midfield, they are always coach, coaches from 18 to 35, 36 that they, they end their, their careers because definitely uh, you see the, 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 the way of, uh, of football differently and you got this, this, this different awareness about what is happening around. Uh, says, mate, uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, really, it, may, hopefully next time I can do it in person and we can catch yeah, up. Yeah, I would love that. Nice. <laughs> but definitely I enjoy very much to chat with you, to catch up and um, li listen, um, get well soon. We want to see you on the field. I'm sure that Nico Kovac is missing you as well and uh, nothing. Uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Uh, be well, enjoy Monaco, and uh, all the best to your family as well. In my regards, okay. So, Luis, thank you so so much, yes, and it's been a pleasure. First time you interview me, but I, I could feel from from many years that you had this quality behind you, eh, hiding. Now I can see it publicly. So, no, thank you so much, man. I miss you, and hopefully, I will see you soon. Definitely, I'm sure of that. Hey, thank you.